Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Harbor Freight Earthquake XT. This is their big half-inch cordless impact wrench. Comes with a 4-amp-hour lithium-ion battery. Is not balanced charged. Really big issue there. So that's where they're really cheaping out. There's a few teardowns on YouTube. And the whole mechanical and motor section is actually pretty good. Taiwanese-made uh, tool. Uh, it's using LG cells. Batteries made in Taiwan. And, of course, a Chinese charger. Actually, let me cut away for just a second. One thing I was going to say is I always like chargers with bright lights, and this one has a really bright light. Let me show you here. Charging light is dual color, and it's pretty darn bright. The way it reflects off the pack, it's easy because it flashes green, then goes solid green when it's charged, and you get if you see any red, then there's problems with it. It's just too bad it's not a balanced charger. That was... Kind of a significant issue. So, the issue, well, I should mention that they advertise 1,200 foot-pounds of breakaway torque. Uh, who knows, you know, I there may be some YouTube videos where people actually use those torque testing machines. Uh, but it is really heavy, and you put a big heavy hammer in any impact wrench, it's going to deliver a lot of power. And from the teardowns, it seems that it's actually pretty well built. Uh, it is not brushless. I think only Harbor Freight only has one brushless tool, but it does use a pretty decent quality four-pole motor, uh, brush motor, so it's going to get uh, quite a bit more torque than versus, say, a two-pole. And apparently is using rare earth magnets in the for the permanent magnets in that brush DC motor. Uh, this is a second version, as you can see. I actually got this on the discount shelf uh, for 55% off. Always check out Harbor Freight's uh, discount area because you can... Get some pretty good uh, deals. These are normally 270 or 270 on the shelf, and they should have been a few more bucks, even 300, so that you would get more life out of the battery. These have only been out for a couple of years, so the fact that there isn't balanced charging on the battery uh, really starts to show, you know, three to five years down the road if the battery works at all. It is certainly really tight in the tool. It does have like a little uh, charge level indicator there. I've opened this one up. It does use LG cells. This is a nylon housing versus, say, a more premium battery, which would use a tougher polycarbonate housing. The other thing is there just simply isn't physically enough connect terminals on here for it to be balanced charging. And opening it up, indeed, you have two heavy terminals for the main power out, uh, a thermal terminal, and then an ID terminal, which is just, you know, lets the charger know what type of batteries in there. Uh, a more proper battery like this DeWalt uh, has eight terminals, the two mains, and then we have all these balanced terminals. Inside these battery packs, there's actually 10 individual cells on a bigger one like this. We have five by two. Between each of those, they have these terminals, and then the battery package, or these are double walls, so the battery cells are in like a little uh, protective cartridge and then that cartridge is inserted inside this battery housing that cartridge actually has the terminals for balance charging but they're not connected to anything so it's kind of dumb charging it it's using what's known as a de negative delta but it's relying a lot on just being conservative with the voltages when it's charging and when it's discharging that's what these extra terminals on this are for is one is the monitor the battery and one is to monitor the temperature i guess both are monitor the battery but one's for voltage one's for temperature or its id and i don't know if the tool actually uses that id terminal or even the thermal terminal we'll get that in a tear down the next video but it's just a disappointment because they'd use more expensive lucky gold purple lucky gold star cells and then not balance charge them and the reason that's a an issue is as the batteries char get discharged and charged, not all the cells are exactly the same. There's slightly different differences in chemistry, differences of the center of the battery pack getting hotter than the outside or vice versa, causes the different sets of cells to discharge at different rates. And that becomes an issue because if you're just driving 20 volts into it or 21 volts to charge it, uh, it's one cell that may be uh, doing really well, 
will sit there and get baked and overcharged while it's trying to bring up the voltage on the, all the lower cells. Vice versa, a really low cell may go into its protection mode because these are lithium batteries and you don't want them to blow up and catch fire. And uh, that will just kill the battery. And that will start showing over time versus a battery that is balanced where it has all these terminals in between each set of cells so it can uh, stop charging full uh, pairs and bring up the voltage on a low pair. I have to mention that because that's one of the, if this seems almost too good to be true, you know, for how, uh, for the teardowns and there's a really good mechanism in there. Uh, they did cut quite a bit of corn, quite a bit of money doing no balancing on the battery. Black housing, the switch seems pretty good on these type two editions. It's definitely heavy, definitely a solid beast. And certainly the videos have shown it hitting pretty hard. I'll do a comparison against my, uh, Rated at 300 foot-pounds as Milwaukee corded half-inch with a 7-amp motor. There is a difference. It isn't always about more power. It isn't just or having a really small impact wrench. You want to have a balance of maybe speed and weight. This Milwaukee, a lot less torque, uh, is a few pounds lighter. This earthquake, I can understand why it delivers so well, is because it has a huge hammer. The hammer itself probably weighs 2 or 3 pounds two or three pound chunk of steel just in that gearbox. And although this could work for mechanics or anything, uh, if you're doing, say, construction work, driving big lag bolts into wood where it's just constant resistance all the way down, where it's just continuously impacting, and uh, you don't need a ton of torque, but you want more rotational speed, impacts like this will actually get more work done than just having some beast that hits with a million pounds of force. Also, kinetic energy is uh, speed times mass. So we can see the difference here. That spins quite a bit faster than, say, this. This does spin the same speed in both forward and reverse. So the motor has been set up to uh, deliver the same amount of power regardless of what direction you're operating it in. It didn't come with any belt clips or a case, although I got this on the open box shelf, so I believe they do come with a case. Uh, but I think it's hilarious to have provisions on this for a belt clip because this whole tool weighs pounds and pounds. I mean, <laughs> nobody's going to be hanging this off their belt. Uh, it does have a prov provision for a lanyard, uh, which is okay. You know, if you're working on scaffolding or something using this, then you can tie something to it to prevent it from falling. It does have a dual element led and it does okay i mean it'll be if it's really dark then it will allow you to see what you're doing but it does have quite a bit of a shadow because of the bottom of the gearbox uh one thing that's a criticism is there's not really an area where you can just illuminate the light without actually bumping it and that will annoy some people anyway i'll do a couple little uh demonstrations here the point of this is just a speed comparison. I believe this is rated at like 450 foot-pounds of dynamic torque. That's how hard it's hitting with each hammer blow. Uh, compared to the Milwaukee, which spins faster, but is rated at much lower torque. And I'll switch it up for a different test in a second here. That was definitely pretty fast there. Here we go with the Milwaukee. So that was already painfully obvious. This was taking a lot more uh, work. And these are just the same size holes as drilled in a piece of wood. And our second little test, it was obvious that was hitting quite a bit harder than that Milwaukee with 300 foot pounds. You could just, the Milwaukee was super smooth and effective, but uh, I'm switching up. I have a similar. They had the half inch one with 300 foot pounds, and then Milwaukee has this one, which is the three quarter inch with around 400 foot pounds. It's kind of funny because it sounds like such a low torque value, although these are really reliable. So I'm just going to impact this nut on until it just totally jams, and then this should be able to pull it off pretty cleanly. It's pretty well jammed on there. That is loud. All right, this earthquake should just tear this right off of there. And it sure did. 
So anyway, uh, it does deliver. It's really a shame that they chinsed out on the battery and charger, probably because during testing they found that uh, people got enough, so, you know, the battery lasted long enough, so at the point that one of the sets of cells became so unbalanced that the battery just failed or the cells got such low voltage that uh, they went into the fail-safe protection. I don't know if they are protected cells in here. Um, just a kind of a disappointment for something that actually is pretty competitive. You, know, you want to baby the battery and probably and most certainly avoid really running it till it just is dead. Uh, you really don't want to do that. At least pay attention. So when it's getting low on the battery meter, toss it in the charger. That'll probably be your best bet to extend the life out of uh, an unbalanced lithium ion battery. Appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.